Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to quickly show you how to add dynamically add controls to a user form. I'm just going to leave that as the name. <coughs> okay, so now first of all we want to make the user form quite big because we're going to put quite a lot of controls into it. But we're not actually going to add anything onto it. Okay, so first of all just click in the form, go into the form load. Uh, it takes you straight into the form load event if you're just cl double clicking around the form. And everything we want to happen we're going to make happen on the form load event. So first of all, we want to create an array which is going to store our buttons. And we're going to declare it publicly, which basically means that we can access it any time we want and we can access it from any sub <coughs> or any class. Um, so public uh, buttons, let's call it buttons. And then I'm going to declare it as an array between 10 and 10 because I'm going to make a 10 by 10 grid of buttons. And then I'm going to say it is a button. Okay. So now I can have a 10 by 10 buttons, which in total is 100 buttons. 10 across, I'm going to say in this circumstance, and 10 down. Okay. So first of all, I want to create a loop between 1 and 10 um, to run through. So I'm going to create 4i equals 1, 2, 10, which means... And just press enter and it'll come with an X, which means uh, that I, every time it loops around, is going to equal 1 to start off with. The next time it's going to equal 2. Every time it loops around, it's going to add 1 on until it gets to 10. Okay. And obviously we want to go 10 across and we want to go 10 down. So let's create another 4 inside this 4. X equals 1, 2, 10. Okay. Bring that back up together, keep it close together. Okay, so what that's going to do is i is going to equal 1, x is going to equal 1. Then x is going to equal 2, 3, 4, all the way through to 10. And then i is going to change to 2. And so then it'll be x, i will be 2, x will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So i, I 1, i 2, i, two, I 3, <coughs> uh, all the way through to 10 for both. So that actually will loop through 100 times. <coughs> I'm not going to show you that with the message box, um, but we will prove that in a moment. Okay, so now what we want to do is create a new button. And we can copy this little code here because we've already got the brackets in there. So what we want to say is, first of all, we want to call the first one X and Y. No, sorry, I and X. <coughs> you could call it X and Y if you wanted to. So what we're going to say is basically the first time this, this goes through, i is going to be 1, x is going to be 1, which means button 1, 1 is going to be <coughs> this button the first time, but then the next time it will be a separate button. So what we're going to say is it equals a new button. So it's going to create a button with a value of 1, 1. Okay. So now what we're going to say is buttons i to x. Uh location. Now to set something's location in, in VB.net you need to actually define a point <coughs> and then make the location equal that point. You can check the x and y coordinates by going into it but for this circumstance we're going to actually have to define a point because we don't want to know where it is. <coughs> we want to tell it where it is. So dim pt as new point. Let's just say as point. Okay, so first of all, the first time it runs, point dot x, this, this is actually just a point in two-dimensional space, uh, which means it's got an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, so equals zero. That's the top left-hand corner. That's the left of the screen, and then the y is the top of the screen. <coughs> so that means it's going to be in the top left-hand corner of the screen. The very first button we put down is going to be in the top left-hand corner of the screen. So now we just say that the button location is going to equal point. I'm not going to show you this yet because at the moment this will actually not show you anything. We actually first need to add the control onto the form. We need dot controls dot add buttons. Let's copy that out of there. So I to X end. <coughs> so now when we run this, there'll only be one button on there. It'll seem like at least. There's actually a hundred buttons in that exact space because I've not added any coordinates onto it. It's literally put a hundred buttons exactly there and we can only see the very last one it put down. Okay. 
So, now we've added the button, first of all we want to make the button a square shape because uh, I'm going to assume that you're making something like checkers or something like that but it can be any shape you want. To make something square we need to set the uh, width and the height to the same. So since we're talking about a button here, we're going to say buttons itx dot width equals 50 and then its height also equals 50. So that should look a bit better. Notice how quickly it runs. Yeah, you may not even believe it's had 100 buttons in that space of time. But, yeah, believe me it is. Okay. <clears throat> now what we want to do is, obviously the next button we put down needs to be slightly offset that button. It needs to be slightly to the right of that button. So we'll say that we want to add something onto this point. We want to increase that point x equals point x plus... 50 because that's the width of the button we want the next one to be at the beginning of this button so there you go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 now it's carried on going because it's gone back through the loop again and it keeps adding 50 on so actually if we stretch that all the way along you'll see a very very long line of 100 buttons in total going all the way across okay so now what we want to do is we want to say that once uh, button once it's got 10 buttons across we want to start we want to move down a, a, a row <coughs> so we want to increase the y by 50 which means this will put the next one below it dot y plus 50 okay but now we also need to set the point x coordinate back to zero so it starts back at the beginning of the row zero so basically to quickly explain we're creating this button and that's adding on 10 buttons going through 1 to 10 and adding 50 onto it each time so if we just run that bit you'd see 10 buttons get added to the form but then what we're doing is when it comes out of this loop we're setting the x coordinate back to zero which means it's moving back to the left side of the screen we're adding 50 onto the y coordinate which means it's putting it underneath the button above it and then it's going back to the beginning changing this value to 2, that one back to 1, so now we're talking about button 2, 1, 2, 1, and the next time will be 2, 2, 2, 2, and then 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, and then the next time it'll be 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, all the way, all the way through. So now, if we run that, you can see it's added 100 buttons onto the phone, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and again down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so it's quickly added on four as a hundred buttons. Now, obviously they're buttons, so you want you're gonna to want to be able to do things with these buttons. You're gonna want something to happen probably when you click these buttons. So let's create a sub to handle these buttons controls. Uh, now it doesn't matter what you call this. But you will need to have a, a handler inside it. So if we actually add a button onto it, this is just a cheating way of doing it, really. If I double click on this button, it automatically generates the code so I can find out the values of which button actually was clicked. Now, this will not do anything at the moment. I've still got the button on there. It's, it's actually run, it's not running the sub at all. So there's nothing in there as well. But I don't need that button anymore. So let's take that back off. Okay, now what I want to do is add a handler onto the button so that when each button is clicked, uh, it runs this particular sub. <coughs> now to do that, you simply add handler. Okay, now the object is the event that's going to occur is the button click. And because I want it to be defined for each button as and when it's added on, I'm going to use buttons I to X, which is the button that I'm using right now dot click because that's the click event of the button so I'm talking about the event of the button being clicked is the handler and what wants to happen when the button is clicked the object is the delegate now I want to say address of because it's a sub so I'm talking I'm talking about button click because that's the event I created okay so now whatever happens when I click these buttons will be inside here so let's just quick give it a quick test I get a message box anytime I click a button. For every button I click, because that particular function is running. 
Okay, now to know which button I've clicked, I will quickly add a name to the button in its, uh, and I'll just call that uh, I. Then I'll put one of these in the way, just, just in case you added more than 10 buttons on. It might get a bit confusing if you try and add uh, two numbers together, so I'll just put one of those to separate the numbers. And X, and there, uh, sorry. Equals. Okay, so that now is saying that its name, first of all, is 1112. Okay. And now, obviously, I've, I've assigned each one a name, so each one will be assigned a name as it runs through the sub. I want to have the message box tell me the name of the thing that sent me, uh, that sent to this, the thing that made this particular function run. So I'll do send a dot name because I've declared the name here. So the name, let's put a capital letter there. Now it won't really help you out because it's just talking about an object. It knows it's an object. It doesn't know what that object can do because it doesn't actually know the type of object. Uh, potentially you could write button there and that might be able to help you out a little bit better. Okay, so now when I click a button, 1-1. One, one, because that is button 1-1. One, one. Okay, 1-3. One, 4-7 because it's column 4. 7 across. So now I know where each button is. So now I could I could move buttons around. When I click this button I could make its location move up slightly. I could change the background colour of it. I could trigger certain events. It could be a puzzle. Uh, anything that you'd like it to be basically. Now obviously if you wanted to make the form automatically the same width as it you could do 50 times <coughs> the width of the buttons times by the um, times by the amount of buttons uh, and make the form that that size uh, or you could <coughs> or you could just get the button to add some width onto the form every time it runs through the loop okay so now I'm just going to quickly show you if I'm going to save this uh, how I could actually set this to a lot bigger so I'll times these by 10 that's just so I can fit 100 by 100 into it so I'm going to say for i equals 1 to 100 Set these to five so they're going to be a lot smaller. Okay. Now when I run it, may take a second this time as it has quite a lot to process. If it is indeed running, I can do a quick control pause break to make sure button I to X can evaluate your expression. <coughs> Okay, let's just make sure we haven't got any errors on here. There may be a limit to the amount of controls you can add onto a form. So what I'm saying is for i equals 1 to 100, in other words move 100 to the right, and then once you get there, I'm going to say back to 0 on this column. There may be a maximum number of handlers, though I have used up to a 1,000 before. So let's try it a bit of a smaller number. Let's try 40 by 40. I don't need to change the number at the top uh, for now. Okay, there we go. We've got 40 by 40 buttons. Let's add the handlers buttons. As you can see, the more you get, the more buttons across you get, the longer it does take to render. So try and keep your forms within uh, a certain reason. Let's set all the Forms to 20, so they're a bit bigger. There we go. And we've also got the event, the actual number of the button on there as well. So let's see how far down that goes here. So we should have 40 buttons across, 40 buttons down. If I wanted 40 buttons across and 20 down, I could just say on the y axis, just go down 20. On the x even. <laughs> That's how to dynamically add buttons. Thank you very much.